Senator Moore. Thank you. I was entranced, Madam Acting Deputy President. Um, Madam Acting Deputy President, uh, earlier this month uh, we gathered at the Williamstown Town Hall in Melbourne to farewell and to show our love for an extraordinary woman. Uh, at that service where we farewell Joan Kerner, uh, it was a combination of love, shared memories, so many shared memories, and also some almost sense of disbelief that this force of nature whose passion, energy and resilience have influenced so many was no longer going to be with us, was no longer going to be the voice on the end of the phone when you were feeling just a little bit down to say, how are you? Who was no longer going to um, just at exactly the right time send a message of support or actually put something in a newspaper which would stir up your passion so that you would continue the fight which was so important to all of us. Uh, Joan was a true woman of passion uh, in terms of the way she led her life from the time that she worked so hard to get a strong education, strongly supported by her parents, of whom she spoke so lovingly in her first speech as a member of the Victorian Parliament. Uh, and then went on uh, to work across the fields in terms of development of policy, particularly in the education field. Um, so many spoke about the way that she became political, though it seems hard to believe that the woman was ever not political. But in terms of the process, when she as a young mum actually took on the forces of the education department in Victoria to ensure that her family would have strong education and that there would be the right sized class for her young child. Uh, in terms of Joan, uh, people forget that before she was actually first elected to serve in the Victorian Parliament, she was already honoured with an Australia Day honour because of the work that she had already done in her community, particularly around education and in the very important area of land care. So the woman worked. She had strong values and indeed in the publication that she and her good friend Moira Rayner wrote in 1999, which was actually a guidebook, a toolbox for, people, for women to actually have power, she talked about her values and she said, I expect to have my values respected. They are so fundamental that I don't need to spell them out to myself anymore. I know what I believe in. All people are of equal worth. Everyone has an equal right to shape their own lives. Everyone has an equal right to be able to meet their basic needs. And to achieve this, it's necessary to spread opportunities and life chances as widely as possible, to eliminate inequalities, to accept personal and political responsibility and to promote community participation and ownership of decisions. She also said, my values, and I try to measure my actions against them all the time, and they are that women matter as much as men do. Women have the right to determine their own lives. Women's experience matters and should be valued. Women should be able to describe freely and share those experiences. Women's knowledge and experience should be part of decision making at all levels and women are entitled to a fair share of the infrastructure that creates equality and equity. Education and training, employment, safety, health, family, resources and representation. Joan's strength was that she genuinely loved people. People interested her and she wanted to learn about those with whom she mixed. Um, she had a special smile and so whenever people were in her company, she wanted to know how they were. I don't think I remember a time when she didn't say, and how are you? And that was personal and direct. But the next bit was the challenge. How are you and what are you doing? Everybody has a Joan Kerner story. It's one of the, um, the things that we share now, that she's not with us physically, but she is with us, as you well know, Madam Acting Deputy mm -hmm. President. I first met Joan in 1995 at the Women, Power and Politics Conference in South Australia, an amazing event which I've talked about before, which was a celebration of 100 years of suffrage in that state, which led us all, Senator McEwen, um, and bless the South Australians. She was a keynote speaker at all. Uh, uh, she was a keynote speaker. Of course she was a keynote speaker. But I met her 
And from that moment on, I lived not to disappoint her because when she shared her love, she also shared her challenge. And her challenge was that we would be the best possible people that we could be. We all know the work she did as Premier, but so many of us know um, the ongoing commitment she had to ensure those values of which I spoke, to ensure that women had absolute equity. Um, and she did that in a number of ways. Um, certainly, from my experience, it was through the political network that she helped to start. Um, I have always introduced Joan when I've been in her company as St Joan, the patron saint of Emily's List. Um, but Emily's List has worked to support women within the Labor Party, but I also think as inspiration to women who are interested in politics, no matter which party they belong. Um, to look at what they can do to make choices that are informed and to see what they can do to make themselves and their community stronger and better. In Emily's list, Joan was not only the leader, she was the mother and she was also the heart of the organisation and that will always be. Um, I've known women across this country who have been through the midst of political pre-selections and campaigns, which are also always stressful, as you well know. Um, but Joan would ring you up and um, often without warning she'd be on the phone and it would just be Joan here. And I have known the impact that has had on women as they've been working through their own personal journeys in the political sphere. Uh, and also, once you've actually achieved process in this area, she never forgot and she would follow up, but she'd also have very definite suggestions for actions you could take. And that challenge was something always inspirational. And it was that personal link that made, I think, her influence so strong. Many people don't know that Joan Kerner had been unwell for many years. She and her family and her close friends worked extraordinarily hard to ensure that nobody outside knew her pain and her suffering because she felt that she had a role to play to support numerous organisations, uh, numerous people and also to build, to bring that special charm and um, energy into the work that she did because she had an, an expectation that while you lived, you worked and that you had that uh, responsibility to ensure that your world was a better place. Joan left all of us a legacy um, to continue the work which she had set out for us to do. Um, of course she has an expectation that those values of equity will be entrenched, not just in Parliament but in the wider community. Her commitment to um, Aboriginal equity in this country um, meant that there were very many messages of support and loss expressed by Aboriginal people across the country, as you know, Madam Deputy President. And the idea of recognition in the Constitution was one of the things that she was hoping that she would see. To my good friend Ron, um, Joan's partner of over 50 years, Ron, for you and your family, you shared Joan with us um, and gave her complete support and love. We now share her loss with you and the family, but I think we all know that her spirit and her challenge will continue. The biographical details of Joan Kerner are legendary. They've all been spelt out. We know the achievements and the lows of her career. But those of us who were fortunate enough to know the woman to share her love and to know that she genuinely cared. That is a legacy that we will carry with us and it's also a challenge that her values of equity and support and passion uh, and to make sure that all people are equal worth, we must remember that and it's in her legacy that her wonderful memory and that extraordinarily laugh when you'd actually touch the funny <laughs> bone, that will always be a strong memory of Joan Kerner. Thank you, Senator Moore.